And here at the airport, I'm with the Chief Minister from Guernsey, about to get his flight home. And we do hope your flight isn't interrupted like the one the other day, which is another story in itself. Uh, you've actually been here on holiday, so you, have you mixed a bit of business of pleasure though while you're here? No, we've been here for, for, th uh, for three nights and three days, which has been fantastic. I I've been coming here for many years. I actually first came here over 30 years ago, but this was, was the first time it was purely, purely holiday. Um, I, we, I did, did have dinner with the Chief Minister and his wife, and with my wife, but that was just... Uh, an informal uh, get-together rather than, uh, than, than anything else. Fine. Well, you literally got a plane, so I'll be quite quick here. There's a lot of concern or whatever about this air bridge because you have got other ideas. You keep, we keep hearing about pool being opened up and uh, Jersey and whatever. Where are we up to now? How fixed are we on this being secure? I think we're very, very fixed and, and we certainly share all our planning with, uh, with our colleagues in the Isle of Man. So there are no surprises. And we move, on Monday, we moved to a system where all uh, of those who enter Guernsey will, will be required to have a period of seven days self-isolation and then a test on day seven, and they will only be released from uh, self-isolation if their test is negative. Now, that's a, a scheme which has been, uh, as I say, shared with the Isle of Man, and I know that the Isle of Man public health team are very comfortable with that. Right, because you're opening up then, are you? Well, we're not really opening up. We're just, it's just changing the self-quarantine rules. Up, up to now, everybody has had to be, be required to self-quarantine for the full 14 days. But based on more recent evidence, we are comfortable, and as I say, I know that the public health team in the Isle of Man are comfortable also, that the risk can be managed uh, with a reduced self-isolation combined with a test on day seven. I mean, that's obviously a little bit of a loophole because you could fly all the man to Guernsey, Guernsey on back through Guernsey quite happily and then back here. Well, the, I mean, the, 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 the entry requirements are where you've been in the last 14 days. Right. So if you have been in a jurisdiction, um, and of course also we do have high risk, higher risk jurisdictions as well where self-quarantine for 14 days will continue to be required. And we also have a very strict... Uh, um, a penalty regime as well uh, as you have here in the Isle of Man and our courts have not been afraid uh, to use that as well so uh, which I'm pleased to say and the, the population are absolutely as they are here are absolutely determined to, um, to, to to retain a very tight control because they recognize that is the way where we can continue to exist COVID free and uh, a normal life can resume. But then we look at New Zealand and of course there's no such thing as being COVID free because in there, 100 odd day, 102 days, something like that? I know, and yeah, we are 104 or, no, 104 or 5 now. Right. So yeah, we feel a, a great deal of affinity to, to New Zealand's position. Uh, the reality is, and I think the Isle, position of the Isle of Man is the same, I think we, at some point, there will be a, a recurrence from somewhere, um, just that that is the nature of this virus. The, uh, we have to have confidence in the, the track and trace regime, and, and not only our own, but of course your, your regime as well, which we do. So uh, we certainly believe that if we do pick up a case in Guernsey, we will be able to contain it, as I know you will here. And what happens so at that point it then? It, it, so I, it doesn't mean that the air bridge will suddenly come to a, come to a grinding halt. Right. The, the, the air bridge and travel arrangements will you know, very much be dependent on the nature of, of any uh, infection that does arise in either, uh, at either end. And so long as I think we, we understand how it's arisen and whether it's contained, then uh, I'm sure both jurisdictions will continue to be happy with it. And in the meantime, having a sporting renaissance here. I mean, you're coming and going, we're coming and going. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I, and I think it's great that the, both communities have fully embraced it. I know that it's, it's been a massive commercial success for, for our airline, uh, much more so than they expected. And I think the fact that, that's, that, that uh, both communities, including the sports speech teams, have, have seized the opportunity, and, and quite rightly so, because uh, the reality is, is, is things could change quite rapidly and, and we may have to you know, look again at how things operate. So I think everybody should take the time when they can, uh, whilst we are living in this bizarre period of our lives, to actually seize the moment. So let's talk about really for one second, because I've done an interview today with MHK, who's very strongly looking at your model and thinks it's a good idea, but you know, it loses a lot of money. I mean, is this the way forward, do you think? Well, it does lose a lot of money, and, and that's been one of our major political challenges over the last decade or so with that national airline. But for us, it, we've always regarded it as being a strategic national asset because it does enable us to have um, security over our own transport links. Uh, I've certainly always believed that there was an opportunity to, and have for a number of years, felt there was an opportunity to talk to the Isle of Man about whether... Ah, uh, well, right, about yeah. whether so really could be more involved here? Well, yes, absolutely, to support your, your transport links as well. And, it, and if it makes commercial sense for the airline and it, and, it, and it works for you, why not? So I'm delighted that 
uh, there has been some initial conversations. Again, it, it, that's a commercial matter for the airline. How do you describe we've... your airs? You know, your, are you open or closed or a, a hybrid model? How do you well, at the moment, at the moment, it's it is a it's what we call quasi open skies. Yeah. But I think the reality is is we've recognised that COVID has changed everything, and uh, and so I think we will be looking to have a more controlled environment in order to ensure that we can have the security over the air routes that we need. And I think that, uh, I think at the moment, is regarded as the highest priority for the next few years. So uh, so we'll see where things go over the next few months. Uh, we, we have a general election in October, so that may change the direction of travel. But I think at the moment, there's, there's strong support for, uh, for, for the airline uh, and, and supporting our connectivity. Finally, I believe you've got the Island Games happening next year. Is that looking good? Yeah, I, a decision will need to be made probably by the end of September as to whether it's, it, it can go ahead or not. I mean, clearly there is a, a sub substantial amount of risk uh, and, and the organisers will need to make that judgment. So, uh, you know, Have you got any opinion on it? On it? I mean, clearly it would be fantastic for it to be able to go ahead, but uh, clearly there's also a lot of uncertainty, so I'm not going to try and second-guess a, a decision which isn't mine. And your population, probably exactly the same here. It's, this is all Marmite. It's closed, open, closed, open. There's no gaining any ground here at all. No, I think, uh, you know, I think our most of, uh, we do have some in our population who, who believe that we should have a, a, a more liberal regime, but I think they are in a minority, and uh, I think the, the majority of the population value what um, the border has enabled us to, to achieve, which is this, uh, what I describe as a gilded existence, where we are able to resume normal social economic... It's a bubble, isn't it? An island bubble. It is, yeah. And to, to have all of that it, yeah. when the world around us does not is of huge benefit. And, and also, it's not just of economic benefit, and I do believe it genuinely is of economic benefit to allow the economy to resume at a full pace, but also for those people who are sheltering, for those people who are very anxious, of which there are many, about this virus, the, the fact that they can lead their lives normally is a huge social benefit as well. And your near neighbours, finally, Jersey, no compromise? They have to be at zero to, to hit the, the same criteria to have a completely open policy? Yeah, I, I mean, we're not in considering uh, opening to, to Jersey at this stage. They have adopted a different strategy on this, and, and I'm not critical of that. I think every jurisdiction has to make their own judgments as what they believe is right for their own community. It couldn't have got any worse though, could it? The first day they opened up, having two uh, positive cases, then six uh, by yeah, the end of the day. I, I'm not going to comment. I mean, that, that, you know, that, that they have made the judgments that they believe are right for them. Um, but it, it, it's not a, um, it would not be compatible with, with uh, the strategy that we've adopted. And so for that reason, um, it, it would not be appropriate for us to have an air bridge with them yet. Okay. And has it helped tourism, this little bridge, both ways? Yeah, I, it has, clearly. But, uh, I mean, let's be it's realistic. Small, right? It's a very small. And, but I think in terms of morale, I think in terms of public morale, in terms of the morale for some in the tourist and hospitality sector, the fact that they have been able to uh, resume some business clearly is, is, uh, is, is beneficial. So we shouldn't dismiss it at all. And I think the fact that it has created links those links may well survive well beyond this crisis and, and that and who knows what will come from that and I think we should we should embrace that as well and before you catch a flight what was your highlight here oh I think just enjoying the space I mean obviously you are nine times mm. us in terms of land mass uh, and uh, the opportunity to enjoy you know you, what a beautiful uh, location you have here uh, I mean I knew it was beautiful having driven around a couple of times before but but not actually being able to walk it and uh, and the weather has obviously been very yes, lucky. Yes, behave yourself like Mr Guernsey Man, who the interview said he came in February sort of thing. You know? Yeah, no, it was very, very clearly arrived in, in the summer, which is fantastic. But no, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think the other thing that, that was, has been very noticeable is the very warm hospitality of um, an engagement from everybody we've met and who've uh, and, and uh, people have got no idea who I am, so it's, it's nice to be anonymous uh, and to have that, that, that warm engagement is lovely and I think that's a reflection clearly of what a wonderful community you have here. Thank you.